Good morning and welcome to the celebration of the Mass on this Tuesday in the octave of Easter. My name is Father John Mitchell, celebrating Mass with you today from St. Pasco Balon Church in St. Paul, Minnesota. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come to us in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have bestowed on us paschal remedies, endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that, possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized. About 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener, and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On Easter Sunday, there was a message that went out from Queen Elizabeth II of Britain, and this was the first time she had delivered an Easter message. And she said the following, This year, Easter will be different for many of us, but by keeping apart, we keep others safe. Easter isn't canceled. Indeed, we need Easter as much as ever. We know that the coronavirus will not overcome us. As dark as death can be, light and life are greater. May the living flame of the Easter hope be a steady guide as we face the future. I thought that was a wonderful message from Queen Elizabeth, that light is greater than darkness, that life is greater than death, and now we need the Easter message of hope more than ever. In our world, we are yearning for hope to get through the current times we are in with the coronavirus affecting so many people and so many families. We are clinging to the hope that the doctors and the researchers will find a way to help us through this. We are hopeful that our world around us can open up again. And in the meantime, we have to hope that the measures we're taking to keep social distance will keep each other safe and preserve life. The joy of the risen Christ brings life to the whole world, and this Easter season of 50 days is a way for us to extend out and to know that the G Jesus is risen and that he invites us to put our hope in him, that in the darkness of the world around us that we can turn to him for light, for hope, and for love. When Mary Magdalene came to the tomb on Easter Sunday morning, she found the stone had been rolled away. And on Easter Sunday, during the, the gospel on Easter Sunday, we heard the first part of chapter 20, from John's Gospel where she finds the stone rolled away, she goes to the apostles and she tells them and Peter and John come running. Now today on the Tuesday of the octave of Easter we get the second part of chapter 20 where we hear what happens now to Mary after Peter and John have gone back to Jerusalem to the, tell the other apostles. We hear that Mary Magdalene now she encounters the risen Lord she is the first one to meet the risen Christ. But when she first hears his voice and looks at him, she thinks it's the gardener. So she asks him, well, if you've taken the body of Jesus, tell me where you've laid him. 
It's only after Jesus speaks her name, Mary, that she understands it's the risen Lord. It's Jesus himself. She is the first one to encounter this hope and joy of Easter. Brothers and sisters, you and I have been given the Easter hope, the Easter joy. Let us take it in and relish it. Let us celebrate it as we come together for prayer and for virtual uh, masses on computer and TV, where you can look at, at the environment now. It looks different than it did of just a few days ago when we were still in the season of Lent. You can see behind me the Easter candle shining brightly and tall. You can see the Easter lilies behind me, and though maybe it's hard for you to smell them, I tell you, I can smell these Easter lilies. Maybe just take a, a breath right now. Can you imagine the Easter lily smell? I hope so. And the, the light and the joy of the flowers and the candles and the white vestments, this all brings us into this joy of Easter. Let us relish it. Let us celebrate it. Let us, as Queen Elizabeth said, we need this Easter hope message now more than ever. Let us bring this joy to every person that we encounter. We pray now for our church. May we all be filled with the joy of Easter and spread it to those we meet. We pray to the Lord. For all those that are troubled in these times by the coronavirus and by other worries and anxieties, may they find their faith strengthened in Jesus. We pray to the Lord. For all those that are working to help the sick, the doctors, nurses, emergency responders, and family members who are reaching out and helping the sick, we pray to the Lord. For all those that are preparing for the sacraments of initiation, for baptism, confirmation, and first communion, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, including a deceased member of our parish for whom we offer this Mass intention, may all the faithful departed rise to life in heaven we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayers. In your goodness, grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Brothers and sisters, I know at this time that it's not possible for you to receive communion physically, and so I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion there's a prayer called the Act of Spiritual Communion. We sent a card like this to all of our parishioners uh, last week, and so maybe you have that card nearby you, um, or you can find this prayer um, on the internet as well. 
and I'll try to maybe put a link to it at the bottom of the, of the page here um, as you're watching to click on it uh, later. So uh, join with me now if you're not able to receive communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Well, thank you for joining me today for the celebration of the Mass. I hope you have a wonderful day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I invite you to join me on our closing song. It's Christ the Lord is Risen Today. It's the alternate melody that you're familiar with. <clears throat> Christ the Lord is risen today. Ha, ha, hallelujah. All on earth with angels say, Ha, ha, hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Ha, ha, hallelujah. Sing, O heavens and earth, reply. Ha, ha, hallelujah. God bless you.